talk about the protein transport in the nucleus. So when we have talked about the nuclear study of nucleus, we know that nucleus is a double membrane structure. Apart from it, it has some nuclear pores or nuclear channels. And through those channels, some macromolecules can easily pass through. But always remember, whenever we are talking about the uh, macromolecules, it requires energy. So energy is in the form of ATP or here specifically in the form of GTP. So first, we start with the proteins has to be moved in or out of the nucleus. So we are talking about a transport or transport of protein from cytoplasm to nucleus or from nucleus to cytoplasm. Now whenever we talk about a movement of some molecules from nucleus to cytoplasm, this type of mechanism requires some signals. What are these signals? I am specifying telling you that we are talking about the proteins. So proteins must have some signal which will tell them that you are destined out of the cytoplasm. So they will move out of the cytoplasm. So the protein will have signal and that signal is known as NLS. That is known as nuclear localization signal. This nuclear localization signal is of two types. The first type is a chain of proline four lysine arginine and then valine. Sorry, uh, arginine, lysine and valine. This signal, if it is present in the new in the protein, it will distend that that protein has to move inside the nucleus because it has it is having a nuclear localization signal. So this protein, because we always say that proteins are formed by the process of translation which is carried out in cytoplasm. But this protein which is having this signal is required inside the nucleus. Now you will be confused why some proteins are required inside the nucleus and why some proteins are required outside the nucleus. Remember when we talk about nucleus, the main function of nucleus is as it has its own genetic material, means the cell's genetic material is confined inside the nucleus. And there were some processes like DNA replication, transcription which is carried out inside the nucleus. Remember DNA replication and transcription are the basic steps which are carried inside the nucleus. So for DNA replication we require enzymes. DNA polymerase is required, RNA polymerase is required, we require some transcription factors. So all these are basically proteins. So those proteins are synthesized outside the nucleus but are targeted inside such as uh, histone proteins that are synthesized outside but they are required inside. So all these type of proteins must have this kind of signals which will tell those proteins that they are destined inside the nucleus. Another example of NLS is there is lysine, arginine and then there are 10 amino acids. There are 10 amino acids and then it has lysine. So 
this type of systems where there are two and, and two bases and then there is a gap of some amino acid again there are some signals this type of signal is known as bipartite sequences because they are divided into two parts with, within uh, which is interrupted due to some amino acid and if these amino acid is changed or if these amino acid is mutated it will not cause any change in the signals this push this two amino acid and this amino acid is sufficient for making it transfer to the nucleus but this 10 amino acid the gap of 10 amino acid to be maintained but whatever amino acid it may be it will not cause any effective change in the nuclear localization signal. Now this type of bipartite sequences we find in nucleoplasm. In nucleoproteins we find this type of systems. So there are NLS sequences which are required. Now this sequences has to be received by the nucleus. So if suppose this is the double membrane nucleus. So the nucleus must have some receptors to receive this. And this receptor sequences is known as nuclear receptor sequences. So this nuclear receptor sequences uh, or nuclear trans uh, nuclear membrane sequences will help in recognizing all this type of signals. Now once this signal is present in a protein that has got its capability to move. So that type of protein will talk as carboproteins. Remember, we are talking about the nucleus. Let's suppose this is a double layer of nucleus. It has nuclear tunnels or nuclear channel through which it will transfer the proteins. Let us suppose this is the nuclear channel. Now we first begin with two words. One is important. Another word is exported. What are these two? Important and exported are a type of nuclear receptors. Important is used whenever some substances has to be imported inside the nucleus. Exported are used whenever a substance has to be traveled outside the nucleus. So if this is the nuclear layer, we assume that this is inside the nucleus and this is in the cytoplasm. This is inside the nucleus and this is cytoplasm. Now we start with the mechanism. I have told you there is important present inside the nucleus. This important protein can only move outside the nucleus to take the carboprotein in. But for moving this, it requires energy. This cannot diffuse automatically. It requires energy. Now what sort of energy or how it will get energy? It will get energy by RAN GTP. 
This RAN GTP can bind to important. When RAN is binded to important, this will allow important to move out. So important is now capable to moving out. But what are other restrictions? Now this outside this nucleus, there is another protein complex known as RAN gap. What is this gap? RAN gap. GAP stands for GTPase activating protein. RAN gap. Gap is GTPase activating protein. What will it activate? It will degrade GTP. Where it is present? This. So important with RAN GTP when it has moved out, it will degrade this GTP. So it will have RAN GDP phosphate is removed as well as it will release the important. Now, important is present in the cytoplasm. What will happen? Important has moved out because it has to tra tra uh, take another carboprotein from outside to inside the nucleus. So, it will bind to the carboprotein and this carboprotein will have NLS sequence and both of this combinedly will move inside this. Clear? So again after coming inside it will release the carboprotein and it will release the important. So we have started with important inside the cell and we have again got important inside. But Apart from important, there was RAN GTP. This has to move inside. And this will move inside through a receptors known as NTF2. This is known as NTF2 will allow this RAN GTP to come inside. Once RAN GTP has came inside, it again has to convert it to RAN GTP. This conversion is due to another protein or another enzyme that is known as RAN GEF. This is RAN guanosine nucleotide exchange factor. So it will exchange the phosphate and it will add on a phosphate group and get converted to GTP. This is what important has cycle. Now what about exported? Important means, important I have told you that important has to move out because it has to carry some carboprotein inside. But what about exporting? Exporting are those proteins which will only take some protein inside the nucleus and it will release simply outside. There is nothing other, another mechanism. So this GTP can also bind. This GT, RAN GTP can also bind to exporting. Similarly, it can bind to exporting. Now, whenever it is required that it has to bind to exporter, once it has bind, it can move outside. It will, this RAN GTP will form RAN GDP and it will release the exporter. Before transferring of this exporter, this exporting will bind to the carboprotein. 
So exported with carboprotein binded to RAN GTP will move out. RAN gap will hydrolyze the GTP to GDP. It will release exported with the carboprotein. And once GTP has released, it will move again out. And exported will also move inside with the help of the nuclear force. So this is the general mechanism by which the protein is removed inside and outside. You can see the video twice, so get a good uh, learn, learning. After this, there are some regulations involved in this mechanism. So I will move towards the regulation. What is the regulation? If we talk about regulation, there is in cytoplasm, there is one protein NF kappa B and there is another protein I kappa B. So NF kappa B is a transcription factor and I kappa B is the inhibitor. So what is this inhibitor? In cytoplasm, this tumor, or this transcription factor is bound because there is an inhibitor. This inhibitor will inhibit the transfer of NF kappa B to the nucleus. This is a transcription factor so it has to be present inside the nucleus. But this does not allow, this IF kappa B does not allow the movement of the transcription factor inside the nucleus. Clear? So how this is regulated? If this IF I kappa B, if suppose this IF kappa B is phosphorylated, if you phosphorylate this, then it will release this NF kappa B. So NF kappa B is free and now it can move. So phosphorylation of an inhibitory molecules will help in translocation of this. So this is again a carboprotein which is having an NLS sequence that is nuclear localizing sequence. But nuclear localizing sequence was masked due to the presence of this inhibitor. Once this inhibitor has been phosphorylated, then this NLS is free. Due to the NLS, uh, due to this NLS can show its property and can bind to important and can easily be imported inside the nucleus. So it is a, it's not a very simple topic, but yes, you can go through the videos twice and thrice and you will get you know, accustomed with this topic. Thank you. Hope you will find it beneficial.